The second um, investment was in, in knowledge, learning, bring back the talent, uh, stop the bleeding of our best, best talent going to the U.S. It was, certains des chaires qui ont été créés, des investissements en recherche et développement ont mené à la performance du Canada en intelligence artificielle qui domine aujourd'hui. A lot of concern that academics were leaving the country. There was doubts about the viability of our universities to compete on the global stage when it came to research and policy. As to whether or not I would have considered moving to the States myself, the answer I have to admit is yes. And I remember in 96, 97, was that a low for sure? And, and it made people think of whether they should seek other opportunities. I was involved in attempting to get funding for the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, or SNOW project, in 1989, at which point one had to lobby various parts of government and get good peer reviews from the agencies in order to bring together a, a $60 million project. In 2003, under CFI, we were able to get SNOW Lab, which was the expansion of the laboratory to bring people to Canada, uh, simply through a CFI competition. Times had changed substantially between 1989 and 2003. Around the time of the uh, economic downturn in the U.S., and I could see that Canada was really invested in science and engineering and really invested in early career success. And so as a new uh, PI and a new professor, I was really looking for some place that I could build a strong foundation. And I think that the investments made in the 90s laid the groundwork for what we saw in the, the mid and late 2000s. You know, I love the way research is structured in Canada. I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Canada is my home. It's where I wanted to end up. And ultimately, I returned to the University of Alberta to take an assistant professorship there. And I felt incredibly supported in that through NSERC, through the Canada Research Chairs Program, through the Canadian Foundation for Innovation. Uh, the opportunity of being a Canada Research Chair is excellent. I mean, that's something very attractive to any highly educated or highly talented people and that gives you the freedom that you want. These investments were made in the mid-1990s and I started to benefit from them in 2010. And as a result of that, established national networks and global partnerships uh, and start to um, train the next generation to work in this rare disease space. None of, it, of that would have been possible without those investments made at that time. Canada, a place that people pay attention to and therefore a place where we can recruit internationally as well as supporting our uh, very good young Canadians that uh, come up through our own stream. We are now at the Laboratory of Sociolinguistics at the University of Ottawa, which I founded in the 80s. It allowed me to make a quantity of research that would have been absolutely impossible otherwise, and to train and form thousands of students and other personnel in the study de la langue et l'étude de la sociolinguistique. At the University of Sherbrooke, where I am, uh, we've really been able to create what is a, now an international level hub for research in quantum uh, information, quantum physics, for example. And when I think about where we are today, when I think specifically about my own program focusing on law, technology, and policy, I think the reality is that without the investment that we saw, particularly in our case around Canada research chairs, we simply wouldn't have the research capacity, the policy capacity, both to establish, I think, forward-thinking Canadian rules and also ensure that Canadians and Canada are a player when it comes to global policy. Recently, my lab was awarded a Canadian Foundation for Innovation grant to purchase marine research equipment, and this will allow us to do ocean observation internationally. That support has been essential for me staying on this path of being um, bold in conducting new types of research. We currently link with more than 80 different countries, and we're all sharing data so that we can understand uh, the causes of more and more rare genetic diseases. Et le travail n'est pas fini. Plusieurs de mes étudiants sont maintenant professeurs eux-mêmes euh, dans les universités au Canada et ailleurs. Et j'en ai trois qui sont eux-mêmes reçus des chaires de recherche du Canada, dont je suis extrêmement fière. So when we take a look at students from around the world, that have come to the University of Ottawa, that have come to Canada, that have gone back to, into academia, into government, into industry, 
we recognize that the beneficiaries here aren't just the three professors or the other professors that we've been able to recruit. It's also the students. It's the industry itself that's often been an active participant in what's taken place here. It's government and government policy makers that have often relied upon. We can compete globally uh, when we couldn't prior to 1993-97 period.